number of other things that were all having to do with geometry. And it, those puzz, uh, those new problems are really challenging. Oh, looks like we're starting. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. What would you what like, would you to, like play, to play, Dan? Or wait, or, is this hand and brain sort of like collaboration? Uh, what do you want it to be? I'm up for whatever. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, cool. Yeah, collaboration here sounds fun. So I'm playing. I'm playing. Yep. Whoever else is in here, which one? Yeah, they're using it. Well, at least, wow, wow cosine is Okay. Slightly uh, strong. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, so should we really go for the bird, or should we go for, like, the Frankenstein Dracula thing? Uh, that, that, that scares me even more than that. Oh, okay. Um, let's be, let's real, tra tra let's be real, real traditional. traditional. Okay, works for me. I hope you know this theory. No, we're gonna. Scary. Uh, apparently. Actually, I beat Zug with this one time. Oh, cool. All right. Wait, wait, wait. What's the what's the next question? There's Zug Howard and Toad of Sky. What else? Uh, Toad of Sky. And Toad of Sky. Oh, okay. okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I forget how I played this last time. I'm gonna ring it. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to let you take the the wheel for some of the opening here, because um, I'm not too intimately familiar with this. But... I just want to pull that Trying to fight for a girl in his life. Of course. <laughs> I mean, but look, he played C5 against us, so... Um, yeah, anything could happen. I, I don't know what C5 is. Just play six, 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 five, 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 five it should G2, G2 and then he took the pawn. So this should take G4. G4. And, there and there you can place this. I don't think that's good for black, is it? It's not. Like suddenly so white, white goes, goes from, you know, conceding equality to black on the first move to doing, to doing better. better. Yeah. 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 Or, or I feel like, like take up support ever. ever. You're, you're usually you're not uh, against the one. Yeah. yeah. But it's sort of deceptive though because unlike something like one four where it's the orangutan, you don't just trade center pawn. Your center pawn is protected by the queen, but it's still very vulnerable to these places. Yeah. Did you guys see the game by uh, Richard Rappard of it? Where he played like C5, B6, 5 I don't know, a few days ago. Also, I think you could lower your speakers a bit. The echo here it is. Yeah. Sorry about that. Is that on my No, no, it's 10 speakers. Oh, okay. Ooh, I have a boring Spanish. Does it play the, uh, the Marshall? Which one? The, the Marshall version? I have no idea. He's probably gonna go for some type of thing. Oh, he played the Shrine. Also, like one of the worst uploads possible. <laughs> wow, of course I'm doing shade. Uh, Schleiman is like, if you want to be down upon a I guess the Schleiman is good. But uh, other than that, or like completely lost in the main lines with uh, Knight C3 E5. I mean, I guess you have like the bishop here in compensation, but eh, I don't know. You want to go for the really weird piece sack line? Uh, sure. Which one's that then? Uh, for Cosine's game, he plays the same. So, Wait, what's the piece sack? I don't know. So, he plays f5, you play d4, 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's already too much. What? E4? I've never seen that move. Yeah. Yeah, you end up sacking an ad on C3. It's actually one of the... E4, F E. F E knight E, knight E, D E, and then there's C six, and you just play knight C three. That, that sounds pretty insane. Yep. Yeah. Did I? I mean, it gives white highly. I mean, I'm told it gives white some highly dynamic chances. I've never won with it yet, especially versus um, as <laughs> he's scared. Of. I mean, okay, you have the like the five square, I guess, and you get a bit of box. Actually, right, so after wait, they take, if they take the bishop, they can decline it, but you shouldn't. After they take the bishop, you would take on e4, and I think the move for black is like e6 or d5, and then on to six. And then like, probably knight f6. Alright, I'll, I'll just go for it, I guess. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> wait, what's the, what's the other move for black? Which one? Is that the only way you can get? I, that's the only one I remember, but I think there's a way to find it. Wait, where is the compensation though? D4, F, E. Takes, takes. Wait, wait, you said D, E, F, 5. Wait, does he have to play C6? Hmm, it's the best chance because if you move the bishop, you're just losing a pawn. Queen A5 track. Uh, okay. So C6 is the right move right there. Alright, let's go for D5. I mean, I'm sure there's another way to play it besides sacking the piece, but if you're playing d4, you're sort of... Your intention is obviously to go into the piece sack line. Maybe, maybe you could, like... So d4, f, e, maybe... I don't know what else you can do there. Um, maybe you could take on c6. Because then e, f is bishop f. Not sure. I'd take over the piece sack Okay, Dan, we're playing a Rob and Zug's out of fear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's G4? Is that a move? Are you talking about my game? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. It just looked cool. Yeah, it looked, it's like the, the Rob move. It yeah. It plays G4 every game. Yeah. I need some Rob advice, boys. Zug's already taking me out of fear. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how to do normal development there, um, of some sort. Um. Maybe C4? Yeah, maybe C4, yeah. I guess you just play like E3, C4, and that's... Uh, I guess also possible might be F4, but I don't know. F4, you say, I like it. Yeah. I like that we got these two solid pawns controlling stuff up here. And after E5, you just play Zion. Yep. yep. No, after E5, we play G5. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, no, a, after after E5, E5, you use the force. F, F3. So, E5 and use the force. I guess after E5, you can and play Bishop F1. Just just push everything to the fourth so rank. Okay, okay, you took a 24, 95, right? Oh, G5, it might be interesting. But after, after D5, on the song, you, you're on your own. You're supposed to have compensation, is what I'm told, so. Fair enough. <laughs> Good luck, Kosai. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, he has to take, right? There's no other move, because Queen F5 no, is pretty no, strong. No, once, once you're this deep, there's no other one. Okay, okay. And I'm not playing so, C6. No, like so. Queen G5 lines, because I already played G4. Sorry, what was that? There's no uh, G5, uh, Queen G5 lines. That would like, he doesn't really have a lot of moves. No. I guess there's, there's like Queen F6 here, I guess. Queen F6? That doesn't look good. Actually, I probably just cast and play something like F1. That doesn't look good. I think we've already Queen established that. Six, you can probably a castle and then play like knight, knight c3 or something. Knight c3 looks good too, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's fine. I think he has to think. 
takes it six, is Zug, though, you never and then know. I takes. I'm still failing to see the compensation. There, it will become this a pair. Like, he just plays something normal, like Knight of Six. Oh wait, no, 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 the front's on five. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there is a bit of compensation. Oh, he played guess, D5 in the grab. I'm confused. I guess the... Knight of Six is there. Queen A, Queen A, Triplet, sometimes. Sometimes. Does C4 look like a reasonable move here? What's that? In the ground. Something like C4, D4, and then resign. C4 looks very weird. I just played, uh, like H3, not F3. No, 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 no. The pawn is meant to be hanging the entire game. <laughs> uh, well, you seem awfully confident about that. <laughs> Spirit of the ground. But, like, C4, D5. Yeah, C4, C4, D4, you mean. Wait, so if, if the goal of playing C4 is just to hit that D pawn, why don't we just play E4 instead? No, 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 no. The point of C4 is to make him push past, to tempt him. And then, then we sacrifice our only developed piece on C3, or C6, I mean. We trade our only developed piece on C3 for the knight on C6. And then we bring the queen. We bring the queen right out to A4 and say, don't notice, Don't notice that I'm attacking your pawn. Interesting theory. I think yeah. it's very solid. In fact, I would say it's a uh, new theory. Noted. All right. <laughs> in all honesty, I have no idea what's playing. There's no sensible move. Yeah, that. I guess that's fine. I was just saying A3. Yeah, I was really divided on what to play because this is just a confusing position. But um... if we're lucky, maybe we'll get into a King's Indian reversed or something. I don't know. My Discord disconnect or something? Yeah, you stay here. It look, yeah. Everybody else is. Yeah, it looks like uh, Mike somehow dropped out. I'm sure he'll be back. Oh. Everyone's is now disconnected. Interesting. Um. No, no, it's not just you. It's, um. Yeah, now I've pretty much disconnected. Let me try a direct connection. Likely I'm having some kind of... Oh! Uh, there's a temporary outage on Discord. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, Discord claims that there is a temporary outage inside the client. So... Um, Alright. I mean... If he's in this channel, if he's listening, he can probably hear and probably see what you're saying. Um, yeah, so my own game, I got an interesting hanging pawns situation in the center. Plus I've got G4, so I got like the spike plus the hanging pawns. Um, uh, while in Sicilian positions, this G4, G5 idea, while when well prepared, can be quite effective. Um, it might not be so effective in my game. But that's just what I'm doing. Um, as for our game here, I don't know. I was thinking, I mean, one of the crazy ideas he might have might be to play H5. And I'm not sure where we go next. All right, so he's attacking me in my game, as he should, because I played quite provocatively. Um, 
but I think I can pretty easily defend against his attack. I have to defend a lot of things here. Um, yeah, I suppose that'll do. Alright, so back to the shared game here. And let's see if the dis uh, uh, Discord comes back up or not. Um, I don't suppose that it will. Oh, so wait. Okay, we have two new moves in our game. We've got E5, E4. That's a bold strategy. Um, very confrontational. Um, our king might be walking. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, funny. Uh, anyway, um, a while ago I was working on trying to implement take backs and simuls. But I know Lee Chess is... Yeah, Queen H4 is probably just very strong here. Um, but it might not be winning. We might not be dead yet. On the bright side, if we do lose very quickly, I'll have more time to commentate on my own game. Although it's not looking that great. Um, so, let me go... Hmm... How uh, do I develop? I think I just attack on the queen side on my game. Um, I think I have. I can afford to do that. Yeah, I'll play the most confrontational thing, because it looks fun. Alright, back to the shared game. Oh, we're in check. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, um... But yeah, I was saying that I was working on implementing take-backs, and had some issues testing it. Um... Anyway... How do we get out of this? It looks like... I mean, this is kind of predictable and such, but... Actually, yeah, King e2 is just really dangerous, because it walks into knight d4 check. So our hand is forced here. We have to move the king to f1. Um, otherwise, we get grilled pretty badly. On f1, we might have some chances to survive this. Um, but, I don't know, like, for some reason in the chat window here, you seem upset about this outcome. I thought our goal was, like, to try to play this kind of ambitious, ridiculous style. I mean, yeah, we're objectively losing, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not Zug who played that, that's for sure. Um, alright, so there's a temporary outage in Discord. I can't, don't know why. Oh, crap. In my game, um, yeah, Zug is playing the most aggressive possible continuation. I did not expect that. I mean, I saw that it was legal, but I figured there's no way in a simul he'd actually do that. Well, okay. That's a thing. Um, geez. Also, those curious, you can go look at um, my game on Lee Chess. Um, maybe I'll link to it in 
when I do a video description if I do highlight this. I might not highlight it. I don't know. But anyway, I played like a hanging pawns position plus g4. Yeah, okay. I mean, the point was to like do the shared game on the stream. Um, so people can... Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. And again, Leech Us has like Leech Us TV, but there's no way to do a highlight of a small board. There's no widget for that. It would take considerable setup to get that set up properly, and I'd rather focus on the game. Yeah, well, we'll still communicate. We'll still be fine. The Discord outage is unfortunate, but I don't think it uh, prevents progress. So Zud gambited a pawn against me. Um... I'm going to take the pawn, because that's the most combative thing to do. Um, I mean, if that's what you really want, I could do that, sure. I guess, yeah, our communication will be less effective in this manner. Um, Alright, so he took on e4. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, sure. Maybe? Um, that's interesting. It's very much in line with what you were saying earlier. Um, I think this is more theoretically interesting than my game. Um, <sighs> okay. If you say so, I'm sure this is fine, maybe. We're going for it. I don't know what it is anymore, but we're going for it. Yeah. This is way more entertaining than my game. Plus, Zug's down to like six minutes here. So we got, relative to my game, this is the one where you have the time advantage. We're going to try to milk that time advantage to the maximum here, because we don't have anything. Like, we're dead in the water. Oh. Oh, we're going for a loss. Oh. That's somewhat less interesting. Well, I mean, if you wanted suggestions for a loss, I could have gone with the bird opening, you know? Or could have gone with 1A3, or... I don't know, there's a lot of possibilities if you're trying to lose a game. We're really not doing that well at it. Um... But yeah, if the goal was... I, I'm not sure what the goal was from the beginning then. Um, I mean, are you changing goals mid-game? Flag him. I, okay. I mean, it's easier to flag him if you give him really difficult positions to think about. I don't think bishop takes e4 is that difficult. Like, now he just plays, like, knight f6, bishop g4, and we're just hosed. Um, other moves might have given him a lot more to calculate. Yeah, like I was saying. Yeah, so this does protect our g-pawn. Um, ain't worried about nothing. Yeah, I think there's more to this than just moving fast, though. In fact, you might do better flagging him if you move slowly. Because um, he's playing so many games at once, and it's possible the whole thing that orders what board to go to next might consider like the total duration of the game, as opposed to how much time does he have on the clock this instant. Um, which, to a great degree, makes sense, but... It means when he gets in a time crunch situation, um, I don't know. It's very possible that moving slowly might drain his clock more because he has to get to all the other games first. It's a collective action problem. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, yeah. 
Ain't worried about nothing. Um, Knight C3 could be fun, maybe. Because if you play Knight C3, then you're threatening, like, to play uh, Knight F3, Queen G3, Knight E2. Um, okay, or you just go for this directly, and... Well, actually, he yeah, he does have to... Wait. Wait a second. Is this actually fine? Like, what the heck? If he plays Queen G3, his Queen's getting trapped, maybe. Um... But if he doesn't play queen g3, he's walking into a pawn fork. We might have just made the grab a viable opening. Um, yeah, exactly. That, that's good thinking. And the fact that I played the spike in my game might have confused him a bit. So I'm going to take credit for this if we win. If that's okay. It's all me. Me, me, me. I get all the credit. That doesn't matter. Um not matter. I don't deserve it. <laughs> but yeah, in my game now, I'm forking his bishop and defending my f2 pawn. My g pawn is defended. Actually, my g pawn's hanging. Nah, it's just a pawn. And I'm up a pawn. So... Yeah, no, you might actually have played something that's just really solid against him. Yeah, I think he has to give the piece, which is just positively revolting that, like, you tricked him into this. Um, yeah, no, he's got to play, like, well, knight e4, queen e2, you pin the knight. Um, I guess bishop e... no, he can't defend it with, like, f5 or something, because... Yeah, he's just giving the piece with knight... Uh, well, he can't do knight e4 right now, but... Queen g3, knight e4 next. But he's giving the knight. Um, um, yeah, so I'm... What? Oh, knight d4 is stronger, you say. As in black knight to d4. Um, preventing knight e2, but... Um, Wow, uh, that's an interesting observation. Um, jeez. But if knight d4 is his best move, uh, he's not in a good situation here. Like, holy moly, we get so much activity for that. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the games, I'm actually up on time on my game with respect to this one. Um, and I've been moving slower, but whatever. Which, wait, that doesn't add up. That's not possible, is it? Are we both on move 10? Yeah. So I've been moving slightly faster, but we've been doing okay pace-wise. Oh, okay. Damn. I gotta take the wheel now. Damn, damn, damn. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna manage to keep up with that. That's quite the performance there. I mean, I see the obvious idea of um, just knight d4, knight takes knight. Okay, yeah, Zug took my pawn. Um... Oh dear, he sucks in a time crunch. How many people did he agree to? 20 people? So that's like 3 seconds per board. And we're playing all these crazy variations against him. Which doesn't seem fair. Um, so if he plays knight d4, I kind of have to take it. And then the question is, do I play knight b5 or knight e2 next? Um, well, knight b5 would simply... No, it doesn't lose to f3. Um, it looks terrifying, but it doesn't lose. 
Knight d4, knight takes. Um, knight e2, he can't do that. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. I think Zug missed something. Okay. So I'm going to go after his queen. If he plays um, bishop c4, we just play d3. And, um, uh, yeah. So like I said, I'm taking all the credit for this win. No. <laughs> no, this is amazing. Um, I think the name here might have tilted him a little bit. I don't know. Something tilted him. It doesn't seem like this was necessarily the most sound game of chess. Um, it was effective, but... I don't know, it's unfortunate, I still think, um, that the game played out in this manner. I think we had an opportunity to play against a national master and play something... I don't know, to push... I mean, is this something we're going to be playing in tournament games or something? Um... Okay, so he's threatening queen f2 mate. I'm pretty sure we gotta just take the queen. He does get the rook in the corner, but... Um, I don't see an improvement. Yeah, just taking it is fine. Oh, it's my move on the other board. Oh, wait a second. Um... Interesting. My other board, everything is hanging. Um, okay, it might take me a minute to figure that one out. So, I don't know. In my own game, I'm trying to figure out, like, what do I exchange? What do I sack? I don't have to sack, but it might benefit me. Um, it's a very lopsided position. In fact, why would I give up my queen? Especially when I get mated for doing so. Yeah, I have to move my queen. I have to let him take my piece. I can take a different piece, and it's okay. But, like, the thing I played in my game might be something theoretically I play in one of my over-the-board games. So I'm thinking King G1? Um, because the king is probably safest in the corner here. Um, yeah, I think king g1 is probably a reasonable move. Let's do that. Yeah, my game is terrifying, but this is precisely the reason why I played it. Because, like, my, uh, oh, okay, you can't see this on the stream, but, um... I'm curious about the theoretical significance of an early G4 in the Nimzo slash Bogo Indian. Um, and so I figure, in a quick simul, maybe that... Oh, check that out. Hey, sounds like we're back. I'm going back to um, unofficial Zug simul chat. We're back there. Cool. Alright, so... Oh, do I need to re-invite Mike here? Let's see. Yeah, let's... Um, oh, give him a roll. Oh, I don't know what roles I have to choose from. Um, but, let's see, can we invite him? Or, I guess we can call him. Yeah, I guess I'll just call him directly. Hello? Hey! Yeah, the server is not showing up for some reason. There's a big giant red uh, exclamation point. Oh. Okay, okay so, so I think I where this all went wrong for Zug was Knight F6, because it takes away the Queen's escape from the Arx I could believe that, yeah. That seems plausible. And, like, I think we were just losing. Like, I was just playing fast. 
And I did not calculate meta fear. I was like, yeah, it looks kind of good. Tempo on the queen kind of traps. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to calculate it after you played it, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually quite good. <laughs> I was, I'm just trying to flag man, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Very, meta fear is a very natural move to play without seeing the consequences. Sure. Like, why didn't he see knight d4? That's... You gotta stop knight d2. I, I think... There's possibly something um, not chess related with this game. It's possibly something like we played one G4 and he might be just distracted by the the way in which we played this. I have to find the other game that I played. It was hilarious. That's cool. It was really hilarious. Um. So I'm trying to figure out how do we like not. Get under some heavy fire here. Oh, he played c4. Yes. So his idea is bishop c5. Yeah, bishop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, honestly, I kind of like. Mm, is bishop d4 even a threat? I mean, we just moved to h2. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Dynamism doesn't really matter here because he's down a queen for a knight. Sure. No, I, I get that. I'm just trying to figure out, like, since we have the opportunity to play a good move, let's find okay, one. Okay. <laughs> um, does d4 work here? Yeah, I think d4 seems d4 to be the best try the here. Oh, I, shit, I didn't mean to play that. I was... <laughs> no, that's fine, though. I, I think that is best. I've been looking at this. I don't see anything better. Right, but I should, I didn't calculate that yet. I was just looking at it. I was trying to make an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> so cd, let's calculate this cd. Um, probably queen takes, right? Don't worry about the structure. Yeah, well, no, I'm thinking cd, cd. And that way, if he checks, we could play d4. And that gives us a tempo to take on f4. That looks good, actually. Although, after d4, he can play uh, bishop, bishop uh, d6. Right? Um, D4, bishop d6, d5. Um, oh, he castles. Okay, so... <laughs> so um, I'm just inclined to play c3 here, just to get a solid center. But that's boring. <laughs> listen, listen, we've gone from flagging, we have to now make a masterpiece, Dan. Let's take some time here. All right. Let me take on f4. Let's think about this. Uh -huh. This is now it's time to make the magnum opus. Yeah, no, I, I think your intuition's right here. I think um, taking on f4 looks strong. Um, I'm not seeing any captures or checks or threats here. The only thing is, like, he could take d4, but we take back and then we play c3. Right. He definitely could have on Bissant. On Bissant. How do you see it? Right. <sighs> So what is, what is now the sample line here? Bishop takes, and then what does he do? I see nothing. Uh, I'm assuming knight takes pawn, but I don't know. Knight, that just loses a piece, does it not? And then so like, bishop takes, knight takes d4, knight takes bishop c5, um, and then we can probably play queen f3. Oh, and it comes to check, of course, when he takes the knight. Bishop, yeah, um, so we'd have to like follow with c3, and then he's got rook he8. And he might get some activity for it, or but I'm not like sure that. what else he does. Like yeah, his position's yeah. pretty bad. So bishop, bishop takes, takes, knight takes. takes. Um, what else can we play here? One second. I'm gonna play a move on my board. I think I'm gonna allow on my board a discovered check. Let me look. Um, because he has absolutely no good way to use it, which is hilarious. Um. All my pieces are in dark squares. Well, except my rook. Yeah. I don't know, man. With rook e8 looks a little scary. Yeah, but I just play like rook g1. And what's he going to do? <laughs> There's, He can't win any of my pieces. It's beautiful. Uh -huh. Or maybe he can find something. I don't know. So, like, rook e8, can you just, like, snatch the pawn? Um, Probably. Maybe. We 
You're probably losing the rook, though. Yeah. All right. So worst case, I had knight e4 here, but I don't want to bail. I mean, if you're going whole hog, you might as well take the ball. Yeah. Let me think. I'm gonna play bishop takes f4 on our board. Yeah, that go for it. That looks good. Yeah, because you're correct. We're all gonna win on time. Easy flags across the board. Poor Zog. <laughs> he never gives himself enough time. He certainly tries, but yeah. He plays ninety four. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... Huh, I wonder. I'm sort of inclined to try something crazy like knight 95 or knight g5. But I guess, I mean, if we want to be solid, we could just play c3 here. That's true, yeah. Um... We're going for the magnum office here. You know? Right, right. So <laughs> I'm trying to find the magnum opus move here. Unfortunately, I was looking at something like Queen E2, but that just looks like it hangs the pawn. Yeah, it could be fun to move this knight that we've got on F3. Um, right, so like 95 is what I was saying. Oh like yeah, like you're saying. It looks exciting. I'm not sure if it's sound, but man, it's um, exciting. <laughs> I'll be honest, as long as we don't blunder huge amounts of material, I think anything's winning here. So that's Yeah, that's really true. Good. It'd be fun to find out, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a zug sound. There's nothing really on the line here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, let's look at 95. 95, what does he play? Knight takes just looks terrible. Um, maybe knight e5, knight f6? I don't know. All of it looks bad. Oh, I wonder, maybe uh, Queen E2 could, or Queen E1 might be a good developing move. In which case, our move? Or our board? Uh, yeah, our board. I think it just hangs the pawn. Oh. So, like, Queen E1, and he just take. Is that the, that's the question here. And then I, like, take the knight? Yeah, yeah the knight's hanging on E4, but I'm wondering if he could just take. No, oh, the queen on e4 guards c2. I was going to say, I thought it was more complicated than this. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't. Queens move backwards, you know, the hardest piece. I'm not a GM yet. I can't see those moves. Yeah. Um, just trying to figure out where this belongs. Oh, actually, um, well, no. It's too bad we can't get that knight to move, or we could set up some cheapo along this uh, h2 b8 diagonal here. Just like somehow subtly line up the queen and then... Yeah, I guess I like, he could still like block it too. I, I think 95 accomplishes that like you were saying, taking the knight out of the way. Oh yeah, then yeah, that there's this, you could instead of going for this diagonal, just go for that diagonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and let's see, like 95, what happens if he takes on d2 with the rook? Then we play queen f3? Wait, we're talking about knight e5, takes on where? Rook takes d4. 
a rook takes d4. Uh, and then something like queen f3, and we're lined up. Um, rook takes... Oh, wait. There's intermezzos, but his is with check. So I can't just sack the queen. Oh, Where? Not... Which one? I was just debating, like, knight takes c6 and knight takes a7, but we don't get a check in there. On your board or on my board? On um, uh, your board. So we're on, we're on the same position, right? Knight e5? Yeah, it's just debating, like, knight e5 followed by knight c6. Oh, no, that just loses the check. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't look too high. Uh, but so, knight e5, rook takes d4, and then queen f3, and we're lined up like you want. Oh, right, right. So the threat here is we're taking on c6, and we're also threatening c3, moving the rook away and just putting the knight on e Right. Huh. That's tricky to meet. Yeah. I mean, it, honestly, if we want to bail out, we can play c3 like right now. <laughs> I kind of like d 5 Or queen e1 queen e was a good move, too. I like the move. Too. Yeah. You want to go for the, the diagonal, queen f3? Yeah, I think that's probably the more enterprising, maybe not a sound, but a lot more interesting approach here. Let's do it. Yeah. Now let's look at your Body, your board got extra complicated. Are you? You're up a piece. I'm up a piece. I'm sacking the rook because I think otherwise I get mated. Uh, um, but I can trap this bishop, so um, I think I'm still okay. Can you? Is he fast enough? So bishop takes f3, knight d7. Yeah, he's slow. He'd probably get the bishop. Uh, actually, you might have issues there, because you have to play f3, you have to play king f2 first, and then you got to move the knight out. Or no, you can play bishop, bishop e2. Yeah, the, the other thing is I might not even go for trying to trap this bishop. Like, I just, maybe pawn takes d5. Um, well, no, that doesn't quite work, because he got a5. No, but... I, I think f3 is sort of forced here to get some material back, and then he'll be up the pawn. Yeah. Like, F3, you could delay a move, so F3, knight B7, knight takes, uh, D, whatever, knight takes D5. Yeah, right. Or maybe um, he takes first. And then... Oh, he's got a little intermezzo, he could throw in all this too, so I, I think I do have to play F3 first. Otherwise he plays A5. So I played bishop D5 in our game? I see this, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't quite understand. I I see a free pawn. Um. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Wow. I don't think there's any tricks here. Well, there's a couple things. So you you point out like you could invert the move order for your free pawn, right? Either capture first could, seems interesting. But the key here is we don't want to give the bishop up for the knight. We want to get the knight. And we can give away our knight. Um, because that's a beautiful mm. diagonal. So if knight takes c4, bishop takes, then yeah. bishop takes c4. However, we have a tough time getting the knight on, uh, on c6 to move for our magnum opus fish on, on b7. Right, now I, I think it's worth considering all the candidate moves here, though. That the other variation is um, we trade our bishop for the knight, like you're saying you don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. He recaptures, and then we fork the rooks. He moves his bishop off of f8 to somewhere. Wait, wait, I'm not wait, sure wait, wait, wait. where. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. So bishop. And then we just take h8. And Plus so we'll we. Again. Bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, knight takes f7. Um. I'm not sure where he would go, maybe bishop e7, bishop e7 or something. Yeah, maybe. You could also take d4, which is a bit confusing, and I didn't see that at first. Um, oh, rook takes d4. Yeah. Yeah, it does throw a... That really works. Um, hmm. Um, it takes d4, bishop. takes d4. Maybe f3. 
Either way, I think we're losing the deep pond, but we're getting stuff. Yeah. I thought he was just going to take on d4 right away. This is... Yeah, no, I think your original idea, because I, I missed that whole rip takes d4 idea. Well, no, wait. I saw it. It, it applies in both lines, actually. Wait, actually, Dan, you were onto something here. I was working the rook. We could just completely avoid all of this. Maybe just take on f7 right away. Um, actually... F7, bishop takes. <laughs> bishop takes e4. Rook takes d4. And then we... Uh, play the check on f5? Well, okay, so... Yeah, maybe. Um, you see what I'm saying, though, right? Right, right. Now, you want to know what the positional approach here is? So, positional approach is we consider another candidate move that we've been considering for a long time. We just play C3. Yeah, and, C3 he's not back and even if he, like, pushes the F-pawn so we don't take it or something, we still play Knight F7 and get your idea in where we get that Knight on E4 and this beautiful di diagonal. And D4 is defended, so he can't do anything. Sparklers. Did you bring, <laughs> forget the sparklers again, Dan? Oh, right, right. Uh, I mean, I don't want to play C3, man. That's like, that's too <laughs> Every, everything's winning, but like, that's not winning enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's not what Morphe would do. Exactly. Uh, I want to do Night Takes F7. I mean, if you want, yeah, knight takes f7 looks fine. Knight takes, bishop takes, uh, bishop takes e4, rook takes d4, queen f3, or, or bishop f5 check also seems like it works just fine. Yeah, yeah, no, all that's pretty good. That's very good. Three, and then, like, we're back to having a completely dominating position, and the dust is clear. Yeah, that, that's, that's all good. And, like, bishop takes c6 is coming, followed by queen takes. Um, sure. Which, is, which looks mating, actually. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Because he, he has to he go to d8. Because the bishop on a course covering. And then yeah, so, there, so... we give the check, and then rook, uh, rook e1 looks like it's close to finishing him off. Well, yeah, the monkey wrench in all of this is that after he takes d4, then he plays bishop c5. And so we have to play king h2. What? Otherwise, like, we get double discover checked and... I don't know. I mean, maybe we survive it. Um, so, so what you're saying here, after, after queen f3, he plays bishop c5. Yeah, so he does like rook takes d4 and then follows with bishop c5. Isn't that just losing a piece to bishop e3? Or an exchange? Um, hmm. Wow, I guess he doesn't have very many pieces to attack with, does he? Doesn't look like it. Okay. See, this and I can't even opus. change the move order to make that work either. Wow. This is the magnum opus. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, no, that looks good. So we're taking on F7? Sure. Yeah. Maximum flash. Yes. I hope we didn't forget something. Honestly, even if we forgot something here, it's still a How's your game looking? <laughs> oh, knight, knight f6. Now he's, Zug's crying now, Dan. Why'd you make Zug cry? I don't know. I couldn't resist. This is a bad sign for him. Yeah, I, possibly the fact that we played g4 in both games might have tilted him a little bit. I think uh, that was but I was curious about the theoretical significance of the G4 in my game, so I kind of had to go with it. Well, I think your game was a reasonable G4, and my game was not a reasonable G4. That could well be. We play bishop takes f7. We're going to go for it. Afterwards, I mean, Zug closed Discord, so I can't even, I can't even bring him in for the voice chat, but I'm going to ask why he didn't play knight d4. Just to tilt him. Hmm. <laughs> Is that, is that cruel of me? Yeah. Probably. I 
actually a move we didn't consider here. What if he plays Knight takes d4? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. That certainly slows down our plan. I mean... Um, so the threat's probably like bishop c5, and then, you know, he's, he's trying to fight back with every ounce of life he's got left. Um... I wonder if we can play bishop g5 and then c3 or something. Possibly? Yeah. Oh, he played rook whatever. Yeah, right. How much for that variation? Every variation gets lost in the sand. Oh, wait a second. If he plays knight takes, he's either losing the knight or getting, like, really badly mated, right? I don't know. Knights are really tricky pieces to calculate. Well, you, what I'm seeing here is that our two bishops are very strong, so the bishop on f4 covers his escape on b, b8, right? Right. And we're threatening bishop f5 checks, so after knight takes d4, we just play c3, and if he plays knight c6, bishop f5 is mated. Because he's oh. now open. Yeah, the, Bishop F5 uh, would win an exchange game. or something, yeah. No, it's not. It's, I think it's just forced me. Well, I think so he blocks at the like, rook, but... We can't. Our queen's open now, so we can just take the rook. Oh, you're talking about this position, or... No. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look at it. Stockfish could tell us the details, but... Um... Oh, he played, he played Bishop. See, this just loses the rook, I think. Right, or in the exchange? Um... I mean, I'm gonna calculate... Oh yeah, you're mentioning bishop e3 here. Yeah, that's right. Um... Yeah. This just doesn't look good. Yeah, I'm confused as to, like, surely... I mean, I missed it the first time around. I guess if we do bishop e3, he might do knight e5, but... I mean... How does this work? I'm not sure. Well, knight e5, just queen of f5, Jack. Yeah, over. queen f5 check, rook d7 check. Oh wait, that's not check. No, 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 queen f5 is check. <laughs> right, queen f5 is check, and rook d7 would not be check. It would just hang the bishop. Yeah. Yep, and then you've also got knight <laughs> hanging, and you've got the bishop on f7 potentially hanging soon. Yeah, no, I, wow. Yeah, I guess bishop e3 blocks the check. It's the most reasonable course of action here. I'm still going to look at queen g2, like you said, just getting out of the discovery. Yeah. Um, it does look a bit more passive, though. Like, right. I'm pretty sure we're winning material, but... Yeah, I think bishop e3 does... Let's see. Yeah, I can't even find a crazy move for him here. I was, like, looking at crazy ideas like rook d3 or rook d2 or something to try to keep his attack going, but he doesn't have enough pieces to support it. And we've always got queen f5. Uh, well, sorry, I'm looking at I'm looking at a cheeky move here. So, like, queen, if we if we don't play bishop e3, we play like king g2. Maybe king h2 is a bit better because king g2 looks like it runs into something, or it could run into something crazy, like rook h d8, right? And then he's setting up rook takes e5 and bishop <laughs> e5. Sure. So something stupid like that. Um, yeah, no, uh, king h2 is perfectly fine here too. Yeah, uh, he can't really. He's got nothing to build up to. So Zug is playing himself. No, no, he's playing a silent with moving. Yeah. Uh, bishop e3. Uh, rook takes? Rook takes e5? Or e4? Uh, I guess bishop e3, he might just do rook hd8, just to spite us. Bishop e3, rook hd8. Um, we don't have to take the rook. We can play bishop takes c6. Yeah. Um, we could even play queen takes bishop. Um <laughs> we could. There's a lot of things hanging here, Dad. Yeah. yeah that's great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> At this point, it's sort of like, uh, what's what's the expression? They Pulling say like an embarrassment of riches. Maybe, maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Something like nitpicking. 
So in my game, I've got a pawn up end game. <laughs> I see that. Yeah, and I got a passed pawn, so works for me. Passed pawn, and you got the bishop for it. It's all dandy. Yeah. If only I could just like solidly hammer my bishop on d6, and I don't know. I wouldn't mind exchanging into just a rook and pawn thing, because, like, my past pawn is very nice here. Uh, no, I don't know end games very well. Is this drawn if you trade rooks? Oh, um, so if we just end up with, like, a bishop versus knight end game? Mm hmm. Um, the, the fact that there are pawns on both sides of the board means I have good chances. I'm trying to figure out is this completely winning? Um, but I've certainly got chances due to their, due to my G pawn. If I can, it doesn't help that the pawn is like on G3 instead of G2. If it were on G2, it'd be a lot easier to defend from what he's going to be pushing on the king side. Really? Uh, yeah, because like my winning chances lie in I have to keep pawns on both flanks basically, unless I have some compelling way to get a passed pawn and just ram it through against the knight and not worry about. What he wants to do is trade off as many pawns as possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the pawn count will soon be I have five, he has four. If he could trade that down to just one pawn, um, and then he could sack his knight for the last pawn. So my goal is to like make the position as complicated as possible before he's able to exchange pawns and try to get a passed pawn and push it through or checkmate him or something. Um, so keeping pawns on both flanks helps a lot toward keeping it complicated. Um, if all the so pawns are... in this are... case, the one who's up a pawn, or sorry, the one who's down a pawn wants to simplify as much as possible, and preferably try to ruin your structure in the process. Oh, yeah. actually there's a saying that's like, um, if you have a material advantage, trade pieces, not pawns. If you have a material disadvantage, trade pawns, not pieces. Um... Again, that's just a general saying. It doesn't always work, but it's a good wow. rule of thumb. B4. Or B5. Yeah, B5. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, he's generating Fred play. Um, Oh, so I see. Tactically, he could pick the pawn up if I take it, but I get his A pawn. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Well, so C, C, B, knight C7, bishop, I'm assuming you're looking at bishop C5, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure I calculated this right, so I'm just going to play it. Okay. Um, so see, yeah, knight C7, bishop C5, and I just push A4 and then take his A pawn. So meanwhile, our shared game here, he's played rook f8. Oh, he's moved. Um, this just loses a piece, right? Queen f5? Yes. I, I see no, no way to defend. Right, so queen f5, and then we could take on c5 and hit yep. his rook on f8, yeah. Queen f5, rook d7, queen takes. Yeah. Yeah, that rook looks d7, good. I mean. Um... Let's see and if there's something the rook more. Rook is hit and bishop of five is there. I'm trying to find if there's something more epic than this, but I mean, no. we're going to go on time on this magnum opus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to go for it. Maybe we can take on c6. Maybe we can take on c6. Yeah, I, I just looked at that, and it seems like if we start trading all of our pieces in the center of the board, um, our king gets marooned. So this bishop on c5 is definitely a big part of this position. We can't just. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What if he goes for so bishop takes c6, bishop d5. Yeah. There, and then there. we we sack the queen, then we take the rook. Oh. Well so yeah. Queen that, takes that's queen good. takes, bishop takes, and then we take on d5. But I mean, this is clearly better, oh, right? You played Queen of Magnum. So uh, damn. we're taking the bishop, right? That was the plan. 
Okay. I don't know why he didn't play Rook D7. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I think he he's just trying to go for counterplay. Um, keeping his king in the center makes it very difficult for him to attack. Feels bad, man. This is over. <sighs> Bishops takes D6. I want to look at that afterwards. <laughs> Because <laughs> sure. five is a cute move, and then we can sack our queen, though, and I think we're still winning. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't want to sack the queen for the rook on d4, because, like, we only get the rook, but in that case, we get a rook and a bishop, so. Sure. Uh, we might still have some sacks left in this game. We'll see. Very true. I'm looking for as like bishop f4, so let's check, and then sacking on c6, and then bishop to take c6 mate. Well, repeat that, sorry, spaced out. <laughs> no, just check on f4, and then take c6, and then take c6 again mate. But it's not uh, our turn. Well, he should probably play, uh, I don't even know. What can you play here? FD8 doesn't work. Uh... Oh, he, he probably does have some defense to it somewhere, somehow. Oh, he conceded. Oh, he resigned. Uh, I'm sure he wants to spend time focusing on his remaining games, too. Okay, yours is more, I think, there's more of a chance of someone winning or losing. Whereas the Grob was, the Grob was dead. And so are you intending to like open a study or something here? Do you want to just throw it through the engine or do you want to do it in study first? Uh, whatever you, um, well you're mentioning there are some things not necessarily based on the engine that you wanted to look at, so. Uh, it might be more fun to start with the analysis that way first. Right. Okay, I'll throw it in the study. Okay. I will invite Sword of Sky and Zug it. <laughs> Even though he's still in the silo. Oh dear. Oh, whoops, where did Dan go? Come back, Dan. How do I make you a contributor? There you go. Okay. How did Cosine, Cosine still... Oh, they agreed to a draw in the peace oh. side. That's interesting. Oh, the engine does not like that game. <laughs> yeah, Stockfish doesn't like most games. It didn't like my last simul game either. Um, but it probably had good reasons for not liking it. Okay, so he's trying to do tricky things on my board. Let's spectate the end game. Oh, you might want to spectate your endgame on stream. Yeah, okay, let me switch windows, so... There we go. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll... Basically, I'm trying to avoid tactics here. I'm up two pawns, so I'm very heavily winning this, unless I really mess up. Um, I've got a pretty clear plan of bishop c5 and pushing my a pawn, unless there's some tactics interjected here somehow. Um, I see Zug is trying to play rook e4 check and bait yeah. my king forward or something. Oh, he's also threatening my b3 pawn. Yeah. Um, interesting. Probably, you can probably play just b4 here. Well, I'm thinking I just play rook d1 and then run my d pawn up the board, but this might drop my a pawn, which could be problematic. I don't know. I'm um, very materialistic when it comes to this type of thing. I think you should keep that extra pawn and mush the two pawns on the side of the board up the board. Yeah. 
Everything looks defended, I mean. Right. B4, right. Rook E4, King, where do you want to go, F5? Right, yep, no, that's what I'm looking at. Um, I don't see the mate. No, there's no mate there, but, like, he's going to take my G-pawn. Um, oh, you're, you're faster, you're definitely faster. Uh, yeah, no. Like, I don't know. I'm just trying to find a clean way to win this. Which is something, like, you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to just find a way to win it. But this is complicated, and um, nobody likes facing complications, but I have to. Um, Let's just give a practical look at how... There's still six games being played. So you might be able to afford some complications, because he still has to play six other, five other games. Sure. Oh, here's an interesting thought. Rook d1, knight takes pawn, rook d3. Basically, puts a question to his knight. It's not a very fun question to answer. I don't see it. Um, so, rook d1, knight, knight takes b3. And then d3, maybe bishop b6, d1. and then a5, and I just I've trapped his knight. Um, Wait, so, so after rook d3, where does he go? Yeah, I'm going to play this. Ooh. Why not b4? b4 is reasonable, too. Um, yeah, I think b4 was best there, but so knight takes b3, rook d3. Assume he plays knight c1. Yeah, and the whole thing I was trying to avoid was like rook uh, e4 and rook e3 and rook takes g3 and making this a really dynamic game. I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, contain some of that dynamism here. Uh -oh. Because my pieces are placed quite nicely. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think the knight gets trapped here. Well, I just say like if his knight is on b three, yeah. there there's nowhere it can safely move to. Uh, if I play bishop b six, right. Right, okay, so it, it is trapped in that regard, yes. Right, that, that's all I'm saying. Um, Though, I mean, I feel like mm, the trade-off for a pawn here. So now I just play bishop b6 and a5. Um, let's see. Actually, I think pushing the d-pawn would be more productive. Yeah, pushing the d-pawn is quite right. appealing as well. I like bishop b6 first because you're covering d8, so... And you're also trapping the knight. Right. Um, purpose, and then you just push the d pawn. Well, now I've got two options because you did you did mention d5 and d5, um, bishop or knight a5 doesn't really get the knight out of the situation it's in. Um, well, so something like d5, knight a5, and then you want to play like you can't play d6 because then you know knight knight c6 halts you. Sure. So I think bishop b6 is a good good spot on your part. Yeah, actually bishop b6 also defends my a pawn, because otherwise he plays rook a8 and uh, skewers the bishop and pawn. Um, hmm. That actually, yeah, I didn't notice that one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Something I saw earlier, but forgot about. Rook a8, rook a8 actually well, it works here. Well, does it? Uh, 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 I'm looking, Dan. Give me a sec here. <laughs> this is like the last thing I calculated before going into this um, line oh, you're, here. You're banking on cheapos like a5 knight takes for k1. Uh, I mean, it's not really a cheapo because he doesn't have anything better to do. Does that really work? So he can't take my pawn. That's the whole point. Like, the fact that I've contained this knight is actually a really strong concept, even if like finding actual moves here is a challenge. Um, oh no, I agree. Bishop b6 will have a move. Like not yeah. only does it contain the knight, but you, like I said, you had the right bishop for the promoting square. So yeah, I guess now I just play like a5, and he can't take that with the rook because that would lose the exchange, and he can't take with the knight because that would walk into a pin. Actually, I say you just defeat. Depending on what he does next move, 
if it's rook a8, then yeah, a5. But if not, right. But cool. otherwise, the d pawn's running yes. too. The d pawn is definitely running. Yeah. This looks over. Yeah, I, I somehow think that in time pressure, he didn't calculate all these nuances. Um, so we got the magnum opus of the grab, and we have a beautifully won in game. Oh, I should go over how this game got to be. Um, so. Oh well, yeah, your game was interesting too. Very interesting. Right. Um, I still haven't like for tournament play. I do want to start learning d4 and playing d4 more often. I don't really have something against the Nimzo Indian prepared, especially not for uh, a tactical opponent such as uh, Zug here. Um, so um, I saw that we played the Grob in the other game, and I was curious: like, is G4 something that can even seriously be considered in these lines? So I kind of went for the book. this here, which E3 is not the strongest book move ever, but it's interesting so we get like a semi tarash thing but i've thrown in g4 just to see like where can this go i'm sure we'll find out after the game just like where exactly this is supposed to go but he yeah, does four is the novelty then yeah he does pin my knight uh i defend that as well as defending against queen h4 he sacks a pawn and once again i decide to see like where this goes theoretically um because if we don't play it, we'll never know. So, um, now I'm defending f2. Um, I could have played queen c2 maybe, but now this seemed like a better way to defend or develop. Um, so he takes on e2, I take this, and now his knight's attacked. Um, and he correctly calculates that like I don't have anything better than taking the knight and offering the exchange here. But maybe this is okay um because like if i try to be greedy um what was i looking at like if i do something greedy like rook g1 he's got bishop f3 forcing king f1 and then he's got queen h3 check and i just get mated um so instead i exchange queens but sack the rook but i'm already up a knight and i trap his bishop in the corner so that's where the madness began here. And then I play knight takes d5 because this is, I mean, this, with his g5 move, trying to free the bishop, um, he walked into a fork of knight forks. And so that's how we ended up where we got in this game. Um, oh, yeah, knight up six was, it looks like a time pressure thing. Yeah, I mean, so oh, I mean, now we got this end game here. He plays king f6. It's a reasonable developing move here um is there a way to decide is there even a way to defend against knight f6 um hey i don't think he had anything after he played g5 g5 was just one too many pawn moves in that opening you're telling me that was completely forced so g5 may takes knight a6 there has to be something better um What if Rook, uh, it's an awful move to play, but Rook C8. Yeah, maybe. I mean, even then, so the Knight, Knight E7. Ugh, everything, so many forks. Worked for days. Um, so yeah, back to G5. Oh, and Rook C8, you're saying... Knight E7. <laughs> There's so many forwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like, my pieces are way too active. Even if he does somehow to not lose the exchange, um, he's probably getting mated. So, um, yeah, he needed to develop like he did. Although, probably not to A6. No, I think at this point, Knight C6, and then, you know, you're going to lose the exchange, but at least if you play Knight F6, and then you take on E8, he gets to Rook on E8. Yeah. So... Oh, wait. Oh, this is cool. If I'm calculating this right, I think I am. What, at the end game right now? Yes, I'm playing rook d3. Oh, wait, he's got a check. Why does that have to be check? Oh, man. Wait. How's this go?
Oh, can I change this up a bit, though? Maybe Rook B1. I'll be honest, you're going for some fancy moves here. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do in a, a event, but... I was going to say King E5, but that doesn't work because then he can take on A5. Yeah, that's a good practical try. Um, no, it's, it's not, because King E5 uh, knight takes. And you can't pin any longer because of the discoveries. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, King e5, knight takes a5, rook a1, and then you lose the rook to knight c4 check. Yeah, it just seems like with the king e5, f6 stuff, that already gets pretty messy. Uh, Even that, yeah. Um, How to make progress, though. Discord crash again? No, I'm just thinking. So what are you thinking, Rook D3? Yeah, it's either Rook D3 or Rook B1, probably. Could also be Rook E1 followed by Rook E3. That also works. So uh, Rook D3, I mean, what do you think in his response? I C1? these knight moves are knights are tricky <laughs> no i actually i like rook g3 right so rook g3 what response are you envisioning knight c1 or knight a1 uh it's got to be c1 so knight c1 you play bishop c5 check first oh interesting okay. um and then you're trying to make progress with the d pawn and if you're greedy you can probably play rook a3 yeah i think it, it's got to be rook d3 but for a slightly different reason what would that be, Rook E3? Um, I'm trying to find a way to like involve my knight to take, or my king to take his knight. Oh, you're still trying to trap the knight. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's a difficult exercise, but I don't know. Yeah, I'd say just go for the deep on. But... Oh, actually, so if I play rook a3, he's got knight e2, and okay. he's still cornering his knight. What? what? His knight can't make it out of this prison thing. Knight e2, king f3, knight g1, king g2, knight e2. And it's still trapped. <laughs> His knight's dancing all over the board, but it keeps going toward the h1 corner. and Or the g1 corner. And once it's over there, like, it's... I actually can't even go to g1, because I just take it. Oh, that really is trapped then. So knight e2 check, yeah, you're yeah. winning it. So knight e2, king f3, knight c1 again. And then you play bishop e3 and laugh. <laughs> yeah. And then he has to play the rook over to defend, in which case you push your pawns. 
Or no, you take the knight first, then you push the pawn, because he's not in time, right? Is he? Well, I, I think even the more direct, just king e3, king d2, just wins. This knight has nowhere to go, and if he tries to... I don't know. This is a funny position. Yeah. I wonder when he's going to get to my board. He's on it right now. Oh, cool. He's a little... He's got to have some fun calculating this, because... But yeah, um, this knight's got nowhere to go. He could try to escape it with rook e8 and knight e2, but then I just push the a-pawn. Right, that's what I was, yeah. Right. Um, actually, king d6 is sort of a good try. Yeah, right. So, how are we chopping the knight here, king f i I've got to play, like, king e3, king d2. Unless I do king e4 first, but I don't see a point. I'm gonna... Well, king, yeah, king e4 he just gives the check. Maybe. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna close in on this knight here. Does it work, though? So after, let's say, king takes d5, king d2, right? Right. And then rook c8, and then... And then the a-pawn runs. Yeah. Yeah, a6. Um... Hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. What kind of clued me in that I have this kind of trick is that none of my normal ideas to try to make progress work here. Um, so you look for a beast trap. <laughs> so I, I'm like, well, gosh, this doesn't add up. What are all my candidate moves, not just the reasonable ones? And so we find this. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's how you have like a sixth sense with end games, is you know like what all the common ideas are, and then you're like, well, none of those work, so it's got to be the other thing. I wonder what Zug's saying right now. I'm going to look at the stream. <laughs> <laughs> the feelings of regret. I hope he's impressed. saying something, I shouldn't give this away, he's saying something about if only I could win the G-Pawn. Yeah. I hope he, that oh, he, funny. I hope that this end game play does, I don't know, in some small way, impress him in some, I don't know. Because I think this is an interesting study. I hope no, I know what an interesting study is. The Grob game, or Grob game was there. <laughs> Our Grob game was impressive. Yeah. It was... You go for the... There it is. Okay, so... So... Before I completely commit... Oh, okay, I don't have Rook D3. I don't have any other candidate moves, so... I should play my candidate move here. Yeah. And if he plays, like... I don't know. He doesn't even what have a way... To approach. If, if he tries to approach the bishop, I skewer him and then take the rook. So. But well, I don't even see how he would do that. Like, if he does king c6, I just play rook c3 check. Uh, I mean, you could probably just. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, that was, the, the original plan was just to push a7, a8, but this yeah. wins the rook faster. Oh, but then, well, either way, we're going to get a rook versus knight thing. Well, so, king c6, if you did play a7, and then he took the bishop, and you... Per no, no, yeah, he'd have to. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking of something like a well-timed knight b3, tempting you to take it with the rook. Some and kind of octopus uh, informs me that Zog says, uh. <laughs> ah. Like, he's not... Positively, he's not pleased with this particular position. I believe position. you mean uh. Oh yeah, uh. As in exception e. Oh uh, fuck. <laughs> right. The staple of Zug's uh, of Zug's era handling. I hope. Okay, so yeah, this is where I just check him, and then take the rook.
Is this winning now? Um, so if he doesn't take my bishop, I take the knight. If he does take the bishop, I take the rook. Well, yeah, so king takes bishop, rook takes rook, um, the knight escapes with a uh, check. Right. And then he takes your a-pawn. Yep, you have he a, gets my a-pawn. For, uh, for an exchange. For an exchange for a pawn. Oh, wait, does this knight get out? I believe so. I mean, it's got to go, like, a5. Okay, so it gets out an a5. I could play rook a8 if I really want to keep that pawn. At that point, is it even worth it? That's really no, worth it's it. not. You probably just pick up it's, the it's not at all worth it, but it's funny. But it's not worth it. Yeah, just um, rook a8, you're done. Yeah, so... Actually, if you want to be stylish, you can play a7 first. Yeah. Oh, there's a thought. Because... Yeah. Uh, I guess the stylish... Wait, no. Yeah, he doesn't have a stylish response to that. And then I just fork him and then take... Yeah. Yep. No checks. He's, he's pretty forced to take the a7 one. Still, the most effective way to proceed here is just munch the kingside pawns. So... I'm gonna pursue that. A7 style points. A7's crying. Right? This is technique. Crying it wanted to be A7. Yeah, this technique. is technique. You know they say Geary has technique. His games always <laughs> end in draws. That's a that's a form of technique. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I believe it's a form of um, ancient Russian black magic. Ah, that too. Passed on through the ages by uh, none other than Boris Spassky. Wait, so... You just win. Well, so I'm debating rook f6 check. Uh, that does not help me. No. I was thinking just rook f, yeah, there you go. Rook f5. Yeah. I just wanted to put the thought out there for a second. Um... So now the tempting idea is rook f6. Rook f6, king b6. Uh, or king, sorry, king b5 would be far more accurate. Uh, you can't sack for that. I think it's a draw, right? The king gets in front of the pawn. Oh, wait, I have other... Well... Let me think. I'm one tempo too slow, so I have to take on h5. Yeah. It would have been stylish if you could take the knight. Right. So he can't play king c7. What was that? I didn't hear you. Oh, if he plays king c7, I pin the knight. Right, yeah, rook c4 and then take it. Or c5. This is a nice endgame. Very well done. Very, very well. He's still playing it. He is, yep. And then just king h7, right? Uh, this is winning no matter what here, but um, king h7, king f7, pawn push, king f6 is a little trickier. Um, so better is just push the pawn first? Yeah, pushing the pawn here is fine. Because my king's on the 6th already, so this is a win. I just play king h6, g6, king g8, yeah. Important to play king h6 there. Um, let me just verify that I got this right. Um, it's important. You, I, it might I be King G6 here. So, yeah, King G6. Then you go H7. Now you're close. Right. To yeah, King G3, G6, yeah, G6 would have been a major blunder. So there's a blemish in this game. 
But yeah, so over the board, be very careful about pushing the pawn committally. Uh, I happen to know that the king on g6 versus king g8 is just a total win. I just had to calculate it. Um, I found it. So. I know there's some technicality. I'm not sure if it's with the. Obviously, the rook pawns are drawn in this case. But. Right. I thought there was a technicality with the knight pawn. So. You know, this, the deal with this opposition here is it matters whose move it is, unless the king is on the sixth rank. Then it's always a win. Um, okay. But the reason it's always a win is because of king h6. Um, um, where we would see the position we had in the game, with but with black to move. Um, right. Uh, but, yeah... Here, the fact that I had the opposition didn't hurt me because I could still play king f7 and sidestep. Um, but yeah, if your king is not on the sixth rank, then opposition matters. Oh, I think the scenario I was thinking of was, for example, if the black king was on a h8, right? Your king is on f7, but it wasn't your move. Then black can play king h7. Oh, um, yeah, I think. Stalemate. Let me think about this. So you always, so if we'd gotten that position with king on f7, oh, no, king still, h7. It's, it's still um, winning though. Sorry, no, I think. Yeah, I think you'd, I... you're able to transpose back into um, having your king back on g6 in front of the pawn. Right, because when you play g7 and the king's on g8, he has to go to h7. It's not stalemate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is all winning. Right. Yeah. But otherwise, like, below that rank, um, opposition matters. But once you're up there, it's no longer important. So there's a game study that you have an invite to. Indeed. All right, where shall we start? Uh, I'm going to wait till Zug finishes this, or we can start right now, actually. Oh, okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, so, I think right about here, we're terribly losing. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of... I don't know. We're not winning. Um, we might be okay, yeah, think, but it's scary. Case, I think after E4... Case, was... Yeah, after no, E4, no, this is E4 pretty scary. Right. I think E4 was just the move here. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't think Queen H4 was proper. Yeah, it's Correct. not the most... Maybe Queen H... Right. Wait, so Queen H4, King F6. Uh, taking on E4 doesn't actually look that strong. Right, yeah, no. Um, Black needs to continue development. Um, I mean, maybe Bishop D6 in this case. That looks very scary. Sure, yeah. Yeah, that looks fine. That and looks then good. If we decide to be greedy and play E D, uh knight, knight D four also looks terrifying. Right. Though maybe it just maybe it's just all looks maybe C three. Really just pushing the knight. <laughs> wow, that, yeah, it's I guess that's it, see knight sure. D four looked active, but then there really wasn't a follow up in that case. Right. Yeah. It's a little premature. Well, it's forced there, but... Um, yeah. I don't think he has anything. Wow. So this, the fact that he threw in, like, c5 as move 1 makes it more difficult for his bishop to get involved on f2. Well, so what you're supposed to do... So, I mean, I think c5 was proper here because last game he got burned by this move sequence. Yeah, this is dangerous. Uh, it's playable, but um, not the way that I would approach this with black. In fact, over the board I did have the pleasure of facing 1g4 once, and basically I just played like d5, e5, and bishop e6. I mean, I'm sure black's better, just by the sheer fact that he's up a pawn and I played g4 on the first move, but... Yeah, I, d I don't think it's a free pawn. I think white gets compensation whenever black takes it. 
Like it's almost like a ready where they don't push d4, where you can play things like queen b3. Yeah. Like, uh, what is it called? The ready slav. Yeah, I think that's right. But yeah, with uh, this queen b5 hitting both b7 and c uh, d5, it's it's tricky to meet. Um, oh, you're up a pawn. You can probably just do this. I probably think. fine. Yeah, right. Um, so if nothing else, white has that. Yeah. But I forget how the game went. He didn't play c3. It ended up being... He wasn't down in material, but there was a lot of play for white. Like, huge amounts of play. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, huh. I, I mean, that's not to say that d5 is necessarily wrong, but just taking the g-pawn is pretty scary, especially if you don't know the theory. Yeah. And there is actually... There is theory here, surprisingly. But, so, c5... I guess preventing that, right? Um, Almost yeah, I like guess a, a so. A reverse Benoni preparing to push past or something. I mean, I know some people who against the English will just play g5 on move one. Um, so now we're playing that whole English thing up a tempo. Hmm. And then ff4 was sort of just like, you said it, and I was like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it looks fun. Um, it's something I've not... Uh, delved too deep into, so um, I was curious. E4, maybe? I mean, D5 does look pretty bad. So I keep trying to find ways that black can develop pieces here. Um, well, like D4, can we do this? Do we want to do this? I think we want to do this. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why would we not want to do that? And also... I mean, I mean yeah, it does it control a square. It gives up the d5 and f5 squares to some extent, but... Yeah, and I mean, maybe white can get away, or black can get away with the atrocious f6. Yeah. Eh, f6 might be I don't be see okay. an immediate way like that. <laughs> yeah. And he has to get his pieces out. I mean, this looks like a terrible blunder, so... Um, yeah, I'm... So... In the vein of, like, f6, what if we throw this in before playing f6? That also makes a lot of sense. Um, can't do that, so maybe e5 was premature. Maybe yeah, this somehow, because, you know, f5 is off the table currently. So, like, e5 is four pawn pushes and five moves. It's exciting, but I I'm not even sure black would play d4 to begin with. Wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Go back to that. I refuse okay. to even dying line. All right. Um. Um. Yeah, that's yep. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah. No, that that refutes everything. <laughs> uh, I've have yeah, been on the receiving end of similar things. Experience is a good teacher. Hmm, is this the end of them? So, like, from here, I don't know, this is one potential variation, but... Well, I would just take the material. Oh, I mean, the pawns are material, too, but yeah. Yeah, I'd just take, take the material that way, but this this is like a cheeky way of taking it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... I don't know, it's very thematic though, like you're undermining the base of the pawn chain. Very literally, I'm not like joking here, like... No, 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 so no, now no, we no. take the G pawn and then the F pawn's hanging, the E pawn's hanging, all these are way overextended, and, you and know, then the queen's still pinned. That, I kind of like make G4 better, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't work. We, we can't afford to push past if he plays D4. Yeah. But he didn't, and Queen H4, which, I mean, I guess he should take it, right? Queen H4 is a valid move, but what he played after was, I don't think, taking the pawn is right. Yeah, I... Maybe, I, I don't know. It's difficult for me to criticize this, because this is, like, the most intense position I think we had in the whole game. Right. This Every is sort of option we're, is possible. We're, but we're still battling. Like, White's definitely worse here, 
but I don't think it's within the realm of completely lost. I think we've both strayed from theory. I, like, have no idea what's going on. <laughs> well, in the interest of playing fast, we didn't really analyze this, so I just took. Yeah. I think this looks... After I took, I sort of regretted it, because this looks better than what he played. Sure. So I guess... D3, maybe... I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> Um, so one possibility is knight f6. Well, knight f6, uh, no, doesn't it run into the same, same stuff? Um, I don't think so. So queen g3, knight here. How are you saving the queen? You have okay. to play knight four, which wasn't oh. in the game, which we'll get to, but, you know, we have to play knight d4 here. And... Uh, yeah, I guess knight d4 is forced. Right, because anything else, so if we played like the Zug move, right, anything else is losing the queen. Sure, well, let me... So we have knight d4, we've got... Oh yeah, you are just pointing out knight takes e4 doesn't work either. Um, well, that's what happened in the game, so... Yeah, knight right. we played takes, but in this case, knight e4 is actually slightly stronger because the bishop is still on... E4. Yeah. Actually, so that that was truly a knight f6 was truly a mistake because it did not only chase the bishop back, but it allowed um all these tempos. Yeah. So I. Whoa. Sorry about that. We got some background noise there. <laughs> room, room. Somebody in this neighborhood does that periodically. It's like my neighbor, he's a car guy. Um, I'm trying to find some way to save this for him. Oh, no, I, I think it's totally... I think EF is reasonable. And then after this, you just have to play an AT4. Oh, okay. I think right here, it's suddenly gone from white's worst to, like, white's equal because the queen's really misplaced. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let me see if Zach wants to come in here, and I'll so do this. Oh, sure. This. Yeah. One sec. Yeah, Zug's not. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. He's doing other games, and he sort of just ignored me in chat. I think he's salty because, I mean, I'm not, like, a weak player, but at the same time, I had you, who's stronger than me, sort of blunder-checking the entire game. Yeah, I, I don't know. Could have numerous reasons for his motivation there. Um, might have it, part of it been just the, I don't know, our selection of moves and stuff, too. Like, I definitely, with you in my ear, played stronger than I normally would. 
Yeah, it's an interesting session there. Yeah. <laughs> But that was interesting. I don't think I would have necessarily picked knight f3, but it, it looks like it works very well. And that, like you point out, this seems to be um, pretty good. Um, oh, what line is this? Where did we... Oh, after knight d4. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So this kind of like brings knight d4 there into question. And, uh... Right, but I mean... Ooh, actually... So the threat is this, and it's right. hard to stop. Yeah. It really is. So instead, we use the advantage that suddenly this queen, which was misplaced before because it's getting trapped... Sure. And then like this. Right, yeah. Or I think actually this. Oh that's interesting. Um D three to stop the bishop from coming out, right. right? Yep. And then it's like, what do you do? Um I don't know, you either have to find a well I'm oh, curious can, can we, just we, how far does this get? But Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably not too far. No, no, I think this looks really good. You know what else looks good? If you do it the other way, because, oops. If you do it the other way, because then you're threatening right. too. And this just looks like... Oh, this is just bad. It looks bad. Um, distract, the, distract the queen somehow. Well... C3. Yeah, that might distract the queen. This might also. <laughs> You have to you have to give the queen here, don't you? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm, and it might not even be enough. Uh, well, let's say you don't, and then you still. Have, I mean, yeah, this is the critical position. Well, the point is, of course, you can't take because of the check. Right. So what do you? I don't know. This, this looks awful. <laughs> this looks like the only way to prolong. This looks like mating, but you're prolonging. The yeah, this is well. This is a way to give the queen, and yeah, uh, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not mating three anymore. <laughs> right. Mission accomplished. Uh, yeah, I. How do you want to you do this? I don't yep. know what you do. Yeah, I just yeah. Knight takes queen looks clean enough, and it all looks like you're yeah. That's really interesting. So apparently, maybe instead of knight b5, because it gives chances. Um, something like this. Wait, am I giving up on knight b5 so quickly here? Um, I I don't think you can give the check. And of I course, mean, you have to remember that he, if you give the check, I think it goes really badly. And if you castle first, I'm sorry, if you don't give the check, and you play like d3. I'm going to throw in one move first here. So I'm gonna throw in B4. Now that is that is a creative move. And to that I say no. <laughs> and I check you. I don't believe it, sir. Uh, I just want to see where this goes. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think. Obviously, that's a blunder. Um, right okay. now, there's no rook e8 to rook e1 thing anymore. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> uh, so, material is even, right? Yeah. Well, so, you let me count. If I do this... Uh, I mean... I'm trying to make D3 work somehow, but it's not. It, like, it just doesn't. Uh... Yeah, that might be best anyhow. Yeah. I don't know who's better here anymore, actually. Like, I would That's... say black, but at the same time, 
we sort of have a problem getting this work out. Like, this is probably going to be our plan. Or this. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. It could be that maybe black's better, just because white's development is kind of awkward. I'm being a materialist and siding with white, but... Um, You don't want to take there because that's that's really not a good trade. Um, True. I don't even think I have to take there. No, you can do this, and it sort of tempts him to take because you're sort of threatening this. Taking, yeah. Taking there. Uh, another move for black might be after this knight moves, just playing d3 and giving the pawn for the doubled pawns, and of course the bishop. So. We would have to come that way, but I mean, B2 is a good diagonal for it. Yeah, I'm trying to find something a little more aggressive, like maybe G5. <laughs> and this way I get the G3 wow. pawn. And then what? Oh, uh, I guess black has to move the knight. And that we... doesn't look too hot, actually. Yeah. This looks like terrible. So, that's also, this, this preserves the material, but it's terribly off the sides. Right. Um... So now that you're off sides, I open my rook up. Hmm. Well, I mean, this looks slow. Yeah, right. So th this is kind of like why I was slightly this preferring looks... white here. Um, Same. Um, is Doug not looking over our game? Is he really salty about it? I don't know. It could just be that's too complicated and he just doesn't have time to look at it. <laughs> I'll tell him it was you and me and and that'll probably make him feel better about the loss. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, he's looking over your game right now. Oh, huh. well, that's cool. I guess I'll catch up with him um, on the video or something. But I, I do prefer white here, just because the knight and the king. Yeah, I don't. Um... Yeah, I, li I like white. White's castled. Black hasn't. <laughs> so I guess the options here are, well, this sort of uh, dissuades playing. G6. Sure. But Rook E8, another idea um, potentially is F6, though I don't really like the look of it. And then King F7. Or saying the King's going to be on F8 the rest of the game playing like H6. Yeah, in that's interesting of, too. In hopes of taking it that way. Yeah, it looks like a complicated position, but White seems to be slightly better, I guess. Yeah. So I promote this up a line and promote this up a line and let's see. I'm gonna reinvite Zug to the study in hopes that he will notice. Oops. Well, I seem to have goofed up with the study somehow, and um, Bishop B2 became the new main move. I didn't think I did that, but apparently I messed it up. Um, oh, whoops, what did I just do? What have I done? I accidentally promoted a variation a little too far. I. Didn't think I messed it up, but apparently I did. Oh, um, I don't think so. I can see the chat. That's why you can't respond. 
Oh, that could make sense too. Um, let's see. So the game move was knight c3. And he didn't opt for knight d4, but instead opted for bishop e6. This, which just loses. At that point, yeah. it's really downhill. I think we're just completely winning. Right. Like it would take a major blunder to ruin it. Yeah. Which, again, is why I said like there was a lot of chances to blunder afterwards if it was just me playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been known to hang, hang material back in the past. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all have. Um, like my own end game with Sug there came pretty down to the wire because I was pretty insistent about my way of approaching it and not doing something safe. But um, well, I like the night. that night trap was very elegant. Um, yeah, this D four, like you're saying, Ampasan is probably a better way to approach that there. I'm off to, okay, here we are. Right, yeah, I think Ampassant is sort of forced. And then you were saying C takes because you wanted to respond to this with that. Right. But, yeah, I mean. Let's see. Um, it gets complicated. It does get complicated, yeah. Yeah, that, that's complicated. Uh, <laughs> this is the heroic way to play. <laughs> uh I mean, might as well take the material. Sure. Yeah. Let's and then <laughs> we, we get sort of a similar position to the two lined up. Right. Actually, uh, how do you how do you save the knight? I guess you have to just take the rook. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe bishop takes f4 is not so bright. Uh, what else can you do here? Uh, I don't know, I think bishop f4 looks best. Yeah, I guess you're right, so... Well, you, so, there's a cute idea, actually. I was just thinking. Um, he's conveniently missing a c-pawn, so... Oh, yeah. There we go. This is with check, though. Okay. But it's sure... suddenly this isn't so hot. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Queen c2 seems to be um, a quiet developing move. Yeah. <laughs> Good old quiet developing move. Like, in the middle of this uh, torrential rain of whatever is going on. Yeah. Also, I think the notifications are broken. Do you get a notification when a study is? I did, yeah. Yeah, he didn't get but that. But I think Zug's there. notification got to him while he was playing the Simul. I guess it's still queued up there, but whatever. Yeah, it's sort of it's gone now. There's no red little... Oh, I see. Huh. All right, and if I kick him and re-invite, it doesn't re-show uh, re it. I'm not sure if that's because of a feature, like anti-spam. It's, yeah, it's probably to block against abuse of that kind of feature, yeah. Either way, so this is, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. No, I, I do honestly think Queen Takes was slightly better. Okay. For the fact that, you know, like, if the check is given, right? Sure. And we have the pawn structure intact, we've got the queen out of here, we're still threatening to take, and now we're threatening to bring both rooks over. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was just too pessimistic. Yeah, this is good. Uh, I Can you castle here? I don't think you can, because bishop takes f4 is just devastating, so you should probably take the exchange. Yeah, you're going to have to take that sooner or later, so why not? Right. And then at this point, there's... <laughs> I mean, I would just take. Sure. There might be something yeah. Better. That makes sense. Um, I'm trying to look at things like this and then that. Yeah, I don't think it's quite good enough, though. 
What about... <laughs> so I think what we have to contest with here is that any move that we play, aside from taking the knight, will probably be met by castling. Sure. So what if... <laughs> um... You can't castle. This is true. And if you save the knight, my entire plan was something like taking here, because the knight yep. is still trapped. Yep. And now you're threatening takes, and you're also threatening rook over, and he still can't castle. Sure. <laughs> and if he castles greenside, which is sort of what happened in the game, he's ruined. I mean. Right. It's just, it looks like a bad time. Yeah, that, that looks... Wow. I'm surprised, but that, that looks quite good. But no, I, I'd be safe. I just look safe. That looks safe. Um, I guess castles here? What else would you play? I mean, yeah, it's either castles or rook d8. I don't know that it matters. Hmm. On castles, does knight g5 hurt? Um... Um, it looks like it hurts a little bit. Yeah, I guess. So, like castles, it, rook two, or knight Yeah, five, that that rook does over. hurt. Um, probably queen, queen c. Sorry, not queen c four. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. There's plenty of ideas Maybe here, though. Way. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's the ball. Oh, football has that's joined cool. Rob. Fascinating. Cool. And Zug has turned off the stream? <laughs> Bummer. Maybe he's ref Oh no, he refreshed the stream. Oh, okay. I guess the ball is it's checking out the game. Yeah, I think you're right that um, if we do castle, then this does hurt. Yeah. yeah. Um... um Right, so maybe something like this, or not, not, not that. Whoops, whoops, not that one. Not quite. Not that one. Um, I wonder if you can give the pawn though. Well, let's look at it. Yeah, it still looks bad. It looks really bad. Um, uh, wait. Then there's rook g8, isn't there? It's not quite what I was looking for. Um, that's a thing. It's also possible to throw in like bishop takes here and still this. Um, but is there better? Oh, okay. Rook d8. Sorry, not that one. This rook. Let's just delete this variation. So the other rook, where the rook, here it is. Um, I guess I don't have an alternative, so we go with that. This is also sane. So, key point is that, um, well, let me think. There's another shot. Um... This doesn't quite work. So, yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to try. It's probably bishop f4 here. 
and we've got D2 oh, defended. Um, Oops. We've got tons of ideas. Hello, can you hear me? Hey! Yeah, sorry, chat was going on. That's fine. Uh, okay, what have we got? Oh, one car left. Yeah, so this is, um, I think this is how that could proceed after Rook to D8. Yeah, Queen H8 unfortunately doesn't quite cut it oh, yeah. because of this stuff. So uh, I think just Bishop F4 is simpler there. And I mean, it, it looks like Black is down a queen, and now also getting attacked. <laughs> yep, it's bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> so in that case, again we were on the on passant line. It was queen takes. I believe we were going for the material. Sure. Right. No, no, we were going for bishop c5 check first, of course, developing. King h2, taking the material, castling, and knight g5 sort of looks like problem. Yeah. So the response is probably g6, at which point, uh, I'd say take it, you know? Um, it's, it's fair to take it. Yeah. Just look at all the Zushinzug stuff that could be thrown in here, but yeah, taking this. it looks good. I don't see anything else besides that. I mean, this doesn't look productive. Right. Um, it looks sort of menacing, but after Queen C3, I don't. Okay, maybe it looks. Maybe it gets a little. A little sketch. <laughs> That's the problem with having a queen active. Um, or having a queen advantage. Uh, there's also this move. Well, no, there's not the bishop thing. Uh, so this, yeah, this looks sketchy. Threatening not only discoveries, but also to win the A2 pawn. Sure. Right? That, you know, that does get the rook off of the file. In a very... Yeah. Uh, way. It looks effective. Uh, I'm gonna go with this move. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Oh well, good yeah. enough. But yeah, not ideal. But it's oh. we Jeez. are a piece. It is a it is a piece. Yeah, it is a piece. <laughs> it is less material than we had before, but it is still a piece. And yeah, this I mean, is, knight a three gets it out. Probably should it's not. Yeah, I think my attempt to be fancy here is probably not that great, though. Yeah, we really got to deal with this by simply scooting um, king, or probably moving the queen is better. Where would you move so, it to? Though? Do I have cheapos somewhere? Cheapos would be so nice. Uh. So, oh, also backing you, up. You <laughs> incidentally, this. this is like, um, some I feel just like the king might be less exposed this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you had the whole cheapo based on bishop g1 check, but it's a little harder for anything to reach the king on h1 here. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <I> mean... <laughs> Does that throw a monkey wrench in the entire analysis? Like I think it does. I think it's all it's all downhill from here. Yeah. Uh it all looks good. I mean, at this point, sort of what's going off my head is like we're analyzing a completely one position. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. My tiny monkey brain is like, we're one already. Get over with it. <laughs> I think, like you said, the real the real meat here was... Um, just to skip through the last part. Um, 95 was interesting. <laughs> sure. And then the sack and all of that. Just losing. Yeah. Also just losing. Bishop e3 was pretty surprising. <laughs> uh, Rook d7 should definitely have been played here, but you're sort of just prolonging the pain. Yeah. So um, this happens and then... 
man. Right. So at that point, it's fair to, it was fair to resign when he lost the queen, but you never know in simuls. And he thought he was playing me, so there was a strong chance. Oh. He thought he was just playing me, so there was a strong chance I would have wondered. I see. Uh. I mean, yeah. I think this this is the most interesting position, or this. Yeah, this is a very dynamic position. I should look at what our opening explorer with our master games has to say about oh, this. I, novelty. <laughs> I don't suppose that anything even remotely like this is in that master's database, but... I'm checking the Lee Chess database, actually, and there's been a couple games. Okay, so yeah, well, I guess we might as well go through the Lee Chess database wait, then. Wait, wait, wait. One second. This... Exact position has been played between two above 2,000 players. Wow. This year. Um, Queen H4 was not played, which I think is a mistake. <laughs> I, I will link the game in chat. I mean, you can see it. Yeah, I can see it here. So, DE4. And then we, this transposes. So, there are two games. It does, but they F5 is... Creative? I guess black wins both of these, uh, but let's see. F5 looks like nonsense because black just plays g6. Or h5, even. No, 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 F5 was played by black. Oh, by black here. Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, in the game you're following. Right. Um, and so wait, I'm seeing two options here, one being bishop takes e4, the other being f5. So Ooh, bishop takes where? e4 is a white move, so f5 is also a white move. Oh, I'm way ahead of this. This is, um... Oh, sorry. This move right here. After d, e. Yeah, so... I'm thinking bishop takes e4 is probably, I don't know, a better developing move than pawn f5. Although this is all pretty scary for white. Yeah, so. Not sure what else. Also, I don't suppose that everybody's still probably watching, um, Zug doing his streaming or something to that end. Um, so if it's just me, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I'll take a look. We got this check. We got this push. Oh wow, so, yeah. Basically, f5 and queen h4 happen in any order there. Oh, white actually, is he forced to take? Seems like if you exchange this bishop, it's just game. Um, yeah, 2000 doesn't mean what 2000 used to mean. Like, if you look at the rating graphs, you'll see that the top rating is always increasing there. Hey, welcome. It's an interesting name there. Talent Factory. That's in a place to develop talent, I suppose. Yeah, we're just taking a look over a game, um, a consultation game that was played in a simul, which um, I guess the only consolation for the simul host is that we picked possibly not the strongest opening. Um, I am curious. Just, okay, yeah, the engine doesn't like this at all. It says d e4, and, okay, bishop e4. Oh, wow, it's alternating between moves, giving them the same score. Oh, okay, somehow we ended up in the final position. Not uh, sure exactly um, who's contributing to that at that point. Um, 
But yeah, it's pretty clear the final position White has an advantage. Oh, test, hello. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Back again. So right here. Oh, who else is back? Vin Vin. Oh, alright. Oh, Vin Vin is a stronger player than I thought. He is very strong. Huh. Vin Vin is the guy that gives all the, uh, the engine stuff, right? Yeah, he offers quite a bit of feedback regarding AI um, games that have gone wrong. Right, right. He finds very interesting positions that seem to throw the engine off. Sure. Or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that one. Yep. Yeah, so I was just putting this into Stockfish, finally, after we had some fun exploring this all. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what's the engine's take on this all. And, oh wait, I don't think this is what the engine was recommending. We got partway through this line. Right, right, I put on engine analysis because this is yeah. really the most interesting part. Sure. Um, so yeah, E takes F4 and Black just has nice development and I'm not sure that I have to take it too much further to see that White's in trouble. <laughs> So which which line have we gone down? We've gone down the one that was the game played. And yeah, the game, but instead of the check, line. you just take on F4. I oh, guess I after... really don't want the check. All right, so we found King F1, which Stockfish is cool with. Right. Um. Yeah. Again, it just wants to take F4 because. Yeah, um, I agree with that, but I think throwing in the check first just to get the king off. You might as oh, well. Wait. Why not? Wait, so... How does this... Well, this differs in the respect that Black takes on E4 first. Uh, yeah. So let me... More move order. Annotate this as being a good move. Yeah. What does the two with the engine says about the move order? Is it oh, move yeah. Order? Go ahead. Uh... They're almost equal. D DE is slightly higher. Oh, okay. Like point 0.1. Oh, oh, never mind. Let's only let it go for full depth. <laughs> but I do mean... After depth 20, I'm like, does it even matter if they're like point 0.1 away? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so I, I tend not to rely heavily in the opening unless there's some very tactical position. Um... So this like could turn tactical. Um something where a player easily ends up dropping a piece if they play the wrong move. Yeah. Um, I mean this could turn into that, honestly. Yeah, this could get much more um like that. I don't think it's quite there yet. And so okay, that, that's kind of why I'm just relying on in the opening explorer here, where we've got a 2187 telling us that pawn takes pawn is a good move. And, and in that situation, I'm more likely to just side with a person who's pretty good at the game than to um, trust an engine. But if I really want to pursue something with the engine, then I'll just make sure to go as far as I want to with the line until I'm convinced that it's right. And then try the alternative and see that it's worse. Right, so at this point, okay, the final count is the DE is about at least 0.4 better. Queen H4 has gone off the yeah. uh, multivariate line. There's only three I'm looking at, so it's not even the third principle variation. Mm -hmm. So, meh, I guess this is better. Yeah. And then well, Bishop takes. Sure. And then taking first, apparently. Apparently, Queen H4 is not that strong. It's just sort of like a monkey see, check, monkey do. Right, yeah. Queen H4 makes the queen a bit of a target. And, I mean, black doesn't need to go into any of that. White's got um, a pretty exposed position. Um, so, I mean, there's options here. There's D3, Knight F3. Uh, if you're really worried about the bishop somehow, you could just take here and then try to cast it. Sure. I don't know what's best here. So, like, if knight f3, does anything incredibly awful happen to us? Uh, 
maybe just try to hang on to the pawn. Yeah, I feel like if I had white here, I could manage to lose this no matter what black plays. <laughs> well, I, I know, like, the engine the says this is just, like, minus one or something, but... Oh, yeah, uh, the I'm, engine's, like, positionally, you're kind of you're screwed. Yeah. If you're not down material and the engine's, like, negative 1.4. Well, the, the other problem is that, like, strategically, white doesn't even have a target to strike at, other than, like, the C5 pawn, or maybe doubling the pawns on C6, but... I think strategically, white's goal here is to not lose. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the extent of white's strategy. Um, it's to so not I'd... lose, and then hope uh, black somehow gets, quote-unquote, lost in the sauce. Right, yeah. I've certainly played plenty of game like that. I think I, for a while I was stuck around 1700, 1750 something USCF just playing like that, just hope chess. And then eventually figured out that like to make it beyond that point what I have to do is be able to play with a plan even if it's not necessarily the correct or best plan. Um, but yeah, playing this kind of hope chess where there's like, okay, maybe you have something here, I don't know, but um, so we've got a comment in our chat window it's practically trash, like nothing on the queen side is developed and the king side is exposed yeah, so yeah, what's <laughs> yeah, welcome back <laughs> cat, is, cat is howling like someone's beating it to death for some reason oh, huh I have no idea, it's fed and it's not in any obvious physical pain, so <laughs> sure. Don't call Peter, boys. <laughs> it's being currently pet, it's loved, and it's being calmed down. Yeah, practically this is sort of trash for white. Yeah, so like, generally if you're playing in a tournament game, I know this is a simul game, it's a lot more fun or stuff, but like if you're playing a serious game 60, game 90, game whatever, it helps to have a plan even if you don't believe that it's the best plan. Um, but yeah, here white really just doesn't have a plan. So I guess it was very lucky that Zug played the wrong moves. Yeah, um... Yeah, I guess we're quite fortunate. I mean, I it's, it's you, you pretty tricky because... I mean, I guess we're banking on getting lucky when we... Yeah, E4 was a good try, because it really complicated things. Um, you, but getting into this position in the first place... Okay, I did encourage F4, but... Uh, I wonder... Just how busted are we? Like, Without where F4? does this go south? Uh, I think... I mean, G4 is effectively saying... Black, you don't need to fight for your equality. I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> right, but then he plays c5 and he has to fight. So, yeah. No, I. I mean, I'm gonna. I don't. You shouldn't trust the engine, but like you can hear, I'm pretty sure Black's equal or better. Oh, the, the sheer okay. fact that the G pawn's a target. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. He's at least made a grab for the center somehow. He's developed the piece as well. And he's going to be developing another one with tempo, which normally wouldn't be tempo. Sure. It just it looks like he's better. Because it's I mean, a grub. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to trust the engine here per se, but let me go look at what a master might have done here. So oh, the master database has like three games. White's won every one of these games. Hikaru was playing the black side of this Back when he was a lowly 2500, 2571. Sure. Um, it's the top game in the end. That's interesting that, like, okay, I guess none of these games do we have somebody over 2500 playing white. Um, I guess the top one is, like, Nakamura playing black and somehow managed to lose it, but... I don't know, he plays a wide variety of openings, and who knows to what extent he prepared this. Um, so apparently the move is e4 here. e4? Not f4. Oh, yeah. Yeah, e4 looks fine. 
and then you just sort of play. I don't even know what you would call this position. What are you playing? It's. I... Yes, yeah, so this is what the master database has, and it's, it looks fine. It's not winning. It's not even advantageous, but it's okay. Um, is there something else here? Oh, I'm sorry. E4, D6. So the database is knight c3. Oh, that's the Hikaru game. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, let's look at some one of these more recent games. Oops. This took me into another tab. That's unfortunate. Didn't mean to do that. Let's Dimitri Lavrik. Let's see what we got here. Okay, what else is there? Oh, so it all transposes. Okay. Which game are you looking at? Uh, I was just looking at uh, two of the games. They both transposed into the Nakamura thing. Um, I was also briefly looking at 3D3, but that didn't look so interesting. The Laverick game is um, the most recent one from 2010. It does not transpose. Yeah. It's got B6. I think in all these, like, that g -pawn never quite hangs. Black never quite goes for it. Um... Because it's, it's almost as poisoned as a bee pawn would be. Um, right. Um, I don't know. It feels like in all of these cases, black is sort of... <laughs> the crop is like a psychological weapon. Black is hands at equality on a silver platter and then slowly yeah. changes his position back. At this level, at least, the high level. You know? Right. Yeah, I did and have a... We just turn played at it. was sort of like a blunder fest. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Even I had a tournament game with this. I think my opponent was rated 2,000. I was like 1,900 or something. And I should have won it. I just played one bad move. Um, but, yeah, I was not under very much pressure for most of that game. Yeah, it just seems like that pawn stands there. Okay, it controls F5. It, it's spooky, but... I don't know. Oh, this is the D3 line for a Is this... wait, this transposed. What? Yeah, I think this all transposes. This suddenly transposed into nine potential games. Someone that played G4. I wonder if they don't play C4, it can almost transpose into the D4 line that you played today. Yeah, I think um, if they don't play 1 C5, then. Um, C5, right. we, yeah, we think we get a much more challenging game for White. But I guess maybe Zug just played C5 to avoid all this theory stuff, because I guess he doesn't know that none of us know it, but, um, but yeah, it's all very... In the actual game, it went terribly, terribly yeah. downhill. <laughs> sure. Uh, but no, this, I don't know, was it? I gotta dig the game up. I'm gonna look for it. Yeah, I guess if you want to study that, I'd be glad to criticize what happened. Because <laughs> uh, just because the game went downhill doesn't mean that that's necessarily a good opening for white. Although it's fun. Yeah. I don't know, I can't find it. Uh, 
I forget. It had to be something. So I know he took the pawn, and I know I played c4. Sure. Did he play c6, or was it did he straight up? I, oh, wait. This was right. Now I remember. He played this. Oh. Oh, that's and right. Was, yeah. And I was like, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, this is not in the master's database. Well, not Wait, yet. Why does this have a name, though? This is an e, uh, ECO coded opening. Oh, this. Um, it's it, it's fallen under the section of you know the A zero zero where it's like any other opening. Like the A zero zero is the catch-all for all the obscure openings. Sure. But it says, at least in the Leech's database, Grob opening. When you play C4, it's the Grob Gambit, Fritz Gambit. Sure. And the minute... Sorry, oops. Uh, C6 is the main line of this Grob Gambit, Fritz Gambit thing. And then the minute you play D4, look at what it says. Oh, what? The wow. The Grob for Counter Gambit. Oh, God. I mean, this, this might be playable. Um... This was not playable, I can tell you that. <laughs> this is... I, I forget what the point of it is, but after you take here, I guess, like, 97, and the whole point is just taking the rook. Sure. Like, great. Yeah, so you gotta, like... The, the game revolved around me not taking the rook and slowly baiting it until I could eventually take the rook. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it went like this. And I forget where he messed up. I think he might have played e5. Yeah, I'll, I guess I could dig through Zug Simuls and see if maybe I can find this game. No, I, maybe it was Bishop C6. I can't really remember. Um, Bishop C6. Um, this is uh, from a recent Simul, right? I think so. Oh, we don't have to declare names here. Uh, Oh, this is Discord. Though that would be cool. Or future bloat, I guess, if we just added, like, voice chat over WebRTC or something. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. I don't think Ornica would ever do that. <laughs> I should mention, I don't know which account I played this on. Because I haven't had a serious Lee Chess account in a while. Right. I know I made the account specifically for this simul, so the name is unique. Oh, well, that could be a tricky thing to find then. That's why I couldn't find it, because I don't remember. Um, the simul was like, it was less than a year ago, but more than like five months. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, so at least we know the timer. opening code. Hopefully there's a way to filter by that. I wish Leech just had that, a way to uh, filter by openings. Let's see. Um... Oh, yeah, you're right. Hmm. Bummer. Um... One more, th no, I could try the other tool, but that wouldn't, odds are I wouldn't find it that way either. Um, what other tool? There's a opening study tool that uh, Teluge developed oh. that just like makes all of your chess games into a tree. Oh, um, right, that, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that requires hitting the API and... We'd be loading like half a year's worth of games into that to just get this one game. Where is that utility? I might be able to find that. Uh, it's on GitHub. Search for Teluge uh, Chessotron. Um, I think like hyphens chess hyphen o hyphen tron. But again, I think we'd have to load like half a year's worth of games just to try to get that one. 
let's do Zug Addict. Uh, how many pages? Oh god. Dan, give me a random number of how many pages I should hit the API for. Oh dear. Uh, each page is about 100, I think. Yeah, I've... Um... Still with 100 pages. Uh, sure. <laughs> Your choice, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> oh, apparently it times out if I try to do 100 pages. Yeah, that I didn't surprise me. I the two-second limit. But, <laughs> yeah, you might just have to... I saw um, published somewhere that they're, they, you can download the Lee Chess database if you're really motivated to go find your game. Um, alternatively, maybe if we're lucky, the Game Explorer has it, but probably not. Wait, no, I think the Game Explorer only has rated games. Or Opening Explorer. Yeah, Simul's are just, yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, but it was, some, it was something along this line, and it was like, I didn't take the Rook for half the game, and then... Sure. I believe there was something like Bishop takes F3. Was it this? Or was it... This? The whole point is you have to you have to prevent knight e five like it's oh right yeah uh, so you have to take the bishop and then he just didn't decide to save the rook like that was just never never happened yeah that's not fun I believe this happened sure and I'm not sure if I can take it d three does happen at some point um. <laughs> Yeah, um... But what ends up happening is d3, b3, this, then e3, I end up picking up this pawn, and the rook ends up on this file attacking this guy. And then yeah, I remember ends... seeing that. That was... that was amazing. Yeah, and then it ends with, sort of sadly, Zug finally blundering material. Yeah. It was really sad. <laughs> I was like, no, it was such a good game! <laughs> Man. Uh, it's quite an adventure there, yeah. Well, this was a game. I should probably get dinner. It's 9 o'clock. Yeah, I'm surprised just how quickly that escalated in our, this game. <laughs> yeah, that Bishop E3 retreating move was brilliant. <laughs> it's like... How is somebody supposed to see that several moves in advance that pieces can go backwards? Oh, the bishop e3? Well, that was... That was from, like... It was from right here, I think. Yeah. Because all of this was calculating knight takes f7 or knight takes c5. c4. Coordinates. Sure. Yeah. Tape, tape. Rook takes. King f3. Getting on the diagonal. Right. Just like Dan wanted. And then you pointed out bishop c5, and I did not see this. I only calculated up to queen f3, and then you made me go sure. the, the rook's kind of trapped. Is the bishop. Yeah, I'm sure Zug saw exactly what I saw and didn't see the counter to bishop c5 until it was too late. I didn't even see bishop c5. <laughs> <laughs> But it's sort of like once you get there, and once someone point again, you being in my ear helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have like prompted you. Yeah, but it's Black's turn. Black gets to do something here. <laughs> right. It's e easy to get comfortable with something, especially when you think you're starting to win it. Oh, we. I mean, look at the engine, man. We were like plus ten. Yeah. Right. The game was the game was over after after that. Yeah. This would have been a game. This would have been... Night D4 would have been a real interesting game, and let's go back one more. Uh, e takes F would have been us getting crushed. Or me getting crushed, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that would... So, yes. One, so to recap for the stream before I leave, it went from getting crushed, potentially, potentially getting crushed, to... Uh, where is it? Where is it? 
to interesting equal sure. to holy crap we're winning now yeah to wow this game is sort of getting a bit tragic comic <laughs> <laughs> feels bad okay thanks for the study then. yeah it's it's been interesting and that end game was interesting i actually learned some stuff about end games yeah, it was surprisingly instructive. Like, peace activity is hugely important, and pushing pawns is often very slow. So yeah. it was interesting that I was able to give up a pawn or two to get him positioned exactly where all my pieces were dominating his, and he just didn't have any moves. Yeah, that was impressive. The night trap yeah. was very, very impressive. It's a lot easier for me, though, because I'm not giving a simul, but yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, well... Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Stream. All right. See you around. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll take a moment and just go back over the game I played. Um, so, <laughs> there's my screenshot from my last simul game where somewhere I got lucky in there, I think. Oh, right. No, I remember. Yeah, we went over this. If, if we didn't. It's not that exciting. I just got lucky with this one. Uh, I was curious if G4 was viable. And apparently it's something... Um, at least I have practical chances with it. Um, surely this is not in the master's database. Yeah, didn't think so. Where do we depart from the master's database? We're still not in it. Still not in it. Okay, so this is in the Masters database once, with somebody under 2,000 playing the white pieces. And the Master responded C takes D4. Uh, white played G5. I don't like that at all, because now this is overextended. So, yeah, I'm not going to base um, my theory based on the Masters game, because, like, here I just take the pawn. And, okay, it's murky. But that's all the merc that comes with playing g4 in the first place. Uh, instead, we still have this position. Um, wait, have we transitioned? Now we're in the Lee Chess database. Okay. Uh, apparently in Lee Chess, yeah, white plays h4. What was the white game here? was Kim Lopez versus Simache from last year. Um, one game favors white, one game favors black. Game favoring black, black is rated higher. Black is rated significantly higher. Um, so both of them proceeded H4. Yeah, so the higher rated black takes um, and is just doing very well here. The queen takes d4 is just right out. You don't do that. But also, uh, this whole king side is rather silly. I would not have pushed g5. Um, so, yeah, I know it's tempting to push g5, but um, it does not quite work here. Um, let's see, I would study this further, however, it seems my computer is seriously slowing down at the moment. So unless I can address these performance issues... Can I? I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to call it here. I'll have to pick this up some other time. It's too bad. Because this looks like an interesting theoretical thing. Um, let me terminate one more program, see... Yeah, and no, I think I've just lost control at this point. That's too bad. All right, well, thanks for watching. It's been an interesting simul. Thanks to uh, National Master John Chernoff, a uh, sug addict, for hosting the simul. And I'll see you around. Have a good night.